Okay, so welcome folks. Um, we are here today to talk about uh, trans poetry as artivism or cultural activism. And um, so Rupert Raj has joined us today to be talking about his international trans poetry anthology. Um, the, the title is Of Souls and Roles of Sex and Gender, A Treasury of Transsexual, Transgenderist and Transvestic First um, from 1967 to 1991. It's an unpublished, uh, unpublished work from 2018. Uh, so, folks who are watching this today, um, I'm glad that you've glad that you found it. Um, my name is Dr. Evan Taylor. I'm uh, currently an assistant professor at the University of the Fraser Valley in the School of Social Work and Human Services, um, and I'm delighted today to be able to uh, interview um, and speak with Rupert Raj. Um, Rupert uh, is uh, 70 years old today and has been a Eurasian Canadian pansexual and trans activist uh, since 1971. He's founded two service organizations, three support groups, and three counseling consulting services for transsexuals, cross-dressers, and their loved ones. As a former psychotherapist and gender consultant from 2001 to 2015, he counseled transgender, intersex, gender non-binary, and two-spirit people, and provided trans-positive consulting services and professional training for healthcare and social service practitioners, lawyers, and politicians. In 2013, he was inducted into the National Portrait Collection of the Archives, Canada's LGBTQ2 plus archives, uh, where the Rupert Raj fonds are housed. His three books include Trans Activism in Canada. Uh, this is a reader co-edited with Dan Irving in 2014. Of Souls and Roles of Sex and Gender, A Treasury of Transsexual, Transgenderist and Transvestic Verse from 1967 to 1991. And that's unpublished from 2018. And also Dancing the Dialectic, True Tales of a Transgender Trailblazer, uh, the second edition uh, published in 2020. He's listed on Wikipedia and his full works are cited on the Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity's website. And uh, this coming October, Rupert will be doubly honoured for his 50 plus years of international trans activism and an honorary Doctor of Laws degree uh, will be conferred on him by uh, Simon Fraser University in Bern, BBC. Um, and he'll also be presented with the 2022 Fantasia Fair Transgender Pioneer Award. Um, so thank you so much, Rupert, for joining us today. Um, really happy to be able to talk with you uh, about this in incredible work and groundbreaking uh, pioneering work, and uh, we'll get into some of those details. Um, but first, my first question for you, um, can you tell us about what, what you mean uh, by, by artivism? Thank you, Evan, for uh, inviting me to be on this video. So what I mean by artivism or cultural activism is the intersection of the personal and the political and sometimes also the psychological, the social, the sexual, and or the spiritual through various media such as videos, songs, or poetry. One example is my Toronto trans activist friend, Susan Gapka's poem, My Name is Susan, included in my, and Dan and Dr. Dan Irving's book anthology, Trans Activism Canada, a reader. My name is Susan. I am an ordinary person facing ordinary challenges. My name is Susan. I spell my name on the telephone. S-U-S-A-N, Susan. Yes, that is my name. Can't you see? Once you meet me, you'll agree. Riding the transit bus one quiet day, rambunctious youth a jumping too many times upon my foot, I demand, stop your stomping. Quickly they turn upon me. Onto the floor I land. I scamper to the front of the bus with one of my shoes in hand. I am a political person. It is justice that I seek. My opponents conspire against me and sometimes call me a freak. I am an ordinary woman facing ordinary challenges. My name is Susan. Susan Gapka, 2014, Trans Activism in Canada, a reader. Uh, another example is Toronto trans, intersex, and two spirit activist Alec Butler's autobiographical videos on sex and gender. Some of these may be included in the archives in Toronto. As artivists, or cultural activists, Susan and Alec express their personal and political right to take their rightful place in this world, despite the psychomedical gatekeepers, religionists, bigots, and reactionary politicians. Trans pride, trans power. Thank you so much, Rupert. Um, second question for you. Uh, you compiled of souls and roles of sex and gender, uh, a treasury of transsexual, transgenderist, and transvestic verse from 1967 to 91. Um, what makes your international trans, uh, trans poetry anthology so unique? Well, essentially, this groundbreaking work is a multidimensional, psychosexual, sociocultural, and historical political record in a poetic format by transsexuals, transgenderists, 
and transvestites, now he would say trans and non-binary people, across several cultures and countries from 1967 to 1991. Comprehensive in scope, the bulk of the writing spans more than a quarter of a century. But if you include the few later poems I added from 1991 to 2014, it actually spans almost half a century. My international poetry anthology includes 169 contributors from six countries, collectively penning close to 400 poems or short prose over its 441 pages. That's comprehensive. <laughs> it certainly is. Um, and, and why did you decide to compile this trans poetry anthology? I was inspired by my friend, Canadian trans activist, Linda T. O'Connell's poetry anthology, Fighting Back, a Symphony in Words, published by Fort Street Publications in Winnipeg in 1978. This is likely the first ever single author trans poetry book, a trans poetry book anthology published and a copy of the limited 200 print run is part of the Rupert Raj funds in the archives in Toronto. Linda founded the North American Transsexual Society in Winnipeg, Manitoba in 1973, then moved to Toronto in the mid 1980s. She has multiple sclerosis and is wheelchair bound and now lives at a care center in Toronto. She had to fight the psychiatrist at the Winnipeg Health Sciences Center in the 1970s to obtain approval for her gender confirming surgery. I'll read you the poem she wrote about the psychomedical battle, which is included in my poetry anthology, dedicated to the Health Sciences Center. The blues is a heavy feeling when you know Clark Kent is deciding your sex. A 1970s bearded medical reincarnation wants to say what's between my legs. The street is full of hippie broads like me, yet he wants this girl to look like Doris Day, says something to me about assuming the female role completely, yet I done always felt this way. Slept for dimes in washrooms of bus stations, collected pop bottles for my next meal at the amusement park, walked around with my only clothes on my back, yet I feel the same in day or dark. I bore this pain against the jeers of the crowd, who tried to break and bring me down. I knew if I tried, I could prove my right to be to every dissenter in town. The way I feel is deep and real. That's why for this I die. Yet there are those who were born normal who could still be asking why. For these, I can only say, try to do what I've done and see if you could last the day. You wouldn't begin to figure how I've lasted. Yet the Lord's been in my corner all the way. Try to figure how you're gonna get a job or how you'll pay all the, for all the electrolysis, yet the king's been in my corner all the way. Try to figure how you do all this without the love of family to support you along, not knowing if anybody could ever love you, but I know it's here I belong. You see, it's been here all the time and I'm not really changing my sex. And all, all I'm asking Clark Kent, super doctor, is to now make more functional the gap between my legs. Sure, it's great to be accepted now as a woman, but there's still a need inside of me. I didn't do this hoping for pure beauty, just the right to live as a woman, free. I've got God in my corner, so who must be in yours? Linda T. O'Connell, copyright Fighting Back, 1978. Thank you very much, Rupert. I think it's really important to note that that was uh, that written in 1978. Um, so what is this, um, this anthology? Is this the, uh, the, the first comprehensive multi-author book uh, anthology of transgender and non-binary poetry? It is the first unpublished book anthology on transgender and non-binary poetry by multiple authors. Given that the first print version called Of Souls and Roles of Genes and Gender was completed in 1988 and revised by me in 1991, and was donated to the archives, then called the Canadian Lesbian and Gay Archives in Toronto in 2006, which meant it was publicly accessible to anyone who knew it was there. It was cataloged sometime between 2006 and 2013, and a copy was publicly displayed on May 3rd, 2013, at my induction to the Archives National Portrait Collection, and again on May 11, 2013, at the Archives of Souls and Roles, a performance salon where I read several poems from this version. And it was publicly available again at the September 2015 launch 
of the Rupert Raj Bonds at the Archives in Toronto. The revised again version with a modified title of Souls and Roles of Sex and Gender, A Treasury of Transsexual, Transgenderist, and Transvestic Verse from 1967 to 1991 became digitally available to the public in January 2017 and then July 2018 when it was uploaded to the Transgender Archives in Victoria, BC, and soon after to the Digital Transgender Archive in Worcester, Massachusetts, and the Archives in Toronto via the LGBTQ Digital Collaboratory. It's listed on Goodreads as published in 2018 and is also listed in the World Catalog of Books. Wikipedia states that T.C. Talbert and Trace Peterson's edited poetry anthology, Troubling the Line, Trans and Gender Queer Poetry and Poetics, published by Nightboat Books in 2013, was the first comprehensive poetry collection by trans and gender queer authors. Well, the first published perhaps, but not the first compiled and edited, nor the first publicly accessible as the print version of my international trans and non-binary poetry anthology was publicly displayed, as I mentioned earlier, in May 2013 at the archives. And at the 2014 Writing Trans Genres Conference, Trace Peterson heard me read aloud several poems for my anthology and heard me mention that I hope to co-publish with Trish Salah, my 1991 manuscript. The archives board member, Dr. Elspeth Brown, who helped to catalog my manuscript and my other artifacts sometime between 2006 and 2013, and officially launched them in 2015, stated that I could claim my poetry anthology as the first. Americans often overshadow or sometimes even co-opt Canadians and other non-Americans, or are just plain bad researchers who don't think to look beyond their own borders. However, happily, American-born Canadian historians, Professor Brown and Professor Aaron DeVore, director of the Transgender Archives, are notable exceptions with their Canadian focus and international outlook. Next question for you. Ed, how did you go about compiling and editing your book of poetry? Um, and how did it evolve over the 36 years from, um, from 1982 to 2018, um, including the various titles? I started this project in 1982 and finished the print, first print version in 1988. I sourced the nearly 400 poems and short prose from transsexual and transvestite, now crossdresser, newsletters and magazines from Canada, the USA, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. And I also advertised in these periodical soliciting submissions. I then asked my San Francisco friend, Kim Elizabeth Stewart, who wrote The Uninvited Dilemma, A Question of Gender in 1983, to write the foreword, which she did. In 1988, I asked Marissa Cheryl Lynn, founder of the International Foundation for Gender Education in Wayland, Massachusetts, to publish it. But she declined, as did Marcia Botzer, director of the Ingersoll Center in Seattle, and Joanne Roberts, owner of Creative Designs in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, all telling me they had insufficient funds to publish my book. I was devastated by these rejections, but as I was only making a minimum wage, I couldn't publish the book myself as I couldn't afford to buy a desktop publishing program or a larger printer, and I couldn't afford to pay someone else. So I put the project on hold, adding a few poems here and there, and three years later in 1991, I decided to put this first version to bed. This original print version was entitled Of Souls and Roles of Genes and Gender, and in 2006, I donated it to the archives in Toronto, and it was cataloged along with my other artifacts by my friend, Toronto trans activist, Dr. Nicholas Matt. An alternate title I played with was Of Gender and Genitals of Souls and Roles. But I felt some people might find it too crass, so I settled on Of Souls and Roles of Sex and Gender. The first part of the book's title was the combined titles of two poems in the anthology, one by me and one by Charlene Wanda, or simply CWM, an American trans woman who wrote for the TVTS Tapestry magazine, from which I called a number of poems. Here's CWM's poem of Souls and Roles. Born was the child, spirit of woman, body of man. The child grew into role while he gazed upon his soul. How can it be? This is not me. Oh, wits of science, don't play with me. 
Tell me now, can this be? Look not upon the mind, for logic has no soul. There is no peace in an undesired role. Look upon the heart, see what there be. Do not explain it, for it is thee. And so the journey begins, a bumpy exchange of role, an inner peace, the uniting of soul. CWM 1983 of Souls and Roles. The second poem was the one I wrote in 1990. Sex and gender. Sex and gender in the blender. Form is female, matter is male. Boy inside, girl outside. Sexual rift, gender conflict. Genes and gender do not render one of a kind or peace of mind. Female genes and masculine genes. The world's tomboy is an XX boy. Sex and gender torn asunder. Body and soul strive to be whole. Body image masculine, fleshly fact feminine. To integrate is the goal, gender identity and sex role. Genitals and gender return first to send such loathsome gonads, repulsive doodads. Cunt and clit and tacky tits trade them all for cock and balls. Sex and gender congruity through creative surgery. Eve's physical form into Adam transforms. Rupert Raj, 1990. Then in May, 2013, Michael and Brock volunteers at the Canadian Lesbian and Gay Archives, now called The Archives, invited me to read some poems at the Archives Performance Salon. A year later, my friend and fellow trans activist, Dr. Trish Salah, Associate Professor of Gender Studies at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, who is also a published poet, invited me to read a few poems from my anthology at the first ever Writing Transgenders Conference which she was organizing at the University of Winnipeg in Manitoba. I was thrilled and even more thrilled when she offered to help me get my work published. And also when she agreed to write the forward. So I moved Kim Stewart's 1988 forward to the afterward as I wanted the new forward to be current and I wanted Trish to write it. I also added a few last poems of my own, which I couldn't resist, including poetic tributes to the six dedicatees who had all passed away except for Linda O'Connell. When Trish told me it would be likely impossible to find a publisher to publish the whole book over 400 pages, but that I, we could perhaps get published a few selected excerpts, I declined because I wanted all or nothing in print. So in late 2016, I decided to donate my revised unpublished version to the Transgender Archives affiliated with the University of Victoria Library Special Collections in Victoria, BC. In care of the Transgender Archives founding director, my friend and fellow trans activist, Dr. Aaron DeVore. UVic librarian, Lara Wilson, cataloged the printed version in the library and uploaded the dig digitalized version to the TGA website in 2017. And there was a slight revision uh, in July, 2018, which they subsequently uploaded. My friend, American trans activist, Dr. K.J. Rawson, founding director of the Digital Transgender Archive, uploaded my anthology to the DTA website soon after, as did the archives in Toronto. I was invited by the archives to do a second poetry reading in 2016 at the Glad Day Bookshop in Toronto, along with other queer, trans, and two-spirit poets. I made one slight revision in 2018, and now the final 2018 version of this unique piece of trans culture and history is accessible online to all the world. An almost never ending work in progress. It's good I finally put this almost quarter century of poems to bed in 2018, or it might've become a half century of poems. <laughs> uh, not, not that we'd be complaining. I think a half century of poems would be fantastic. So uh, well, maybe there'll be another version years down the road, but uh, for the in my reincarnated <laughs> life. <laughs> um, and uh, for the 2018 version, can you briefly describe the demographics of these international contributors, um, including the six contributors to whom you dedicated the book? Thanks, Evan. The contributing poets were transsexual and transgender men and women, and male transvestites now called crossdressers from Canada, the USA, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. Sadly, there were no drag queens or drag kings or female crossdressers or self-identified intersex or two-spirit people, and only a couple of known people of color. 
Some of the poets were straight, but many were gay, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, or possibly asexual. Some used their own first and last names, but many used only their first name or initials or a pseudonym. Over the years and decades, the gender identities of some of these people evolved from gender binary to non-binary or gender queer. Even I changed from a macho male in the 1970s to a more androgynous man embracing both my animus and anima, my yang and yin, and wrote a poem to reflect my evolving identity in 2012 and included it in my anthology as pansexual pangender person, citing my psychosexual identity as both Rupert and Ruperta. Pansexual pangender person. Nicholas was the boy who turned inside out in 1972. Nick changed names to Rupert in 1982. Ruperta emerged in 2012, but Rupert and Nick are still here. I'm your pangender baby. Masculine and feminine, animus and anima, yang and yin, and androgyny too. I'm the best of both worlds and beyond. I'm your all around pansexual, pangender person. Rupert Raj, 2012. You can read more about some of the, these contributing poets, many of whom are activists in a second edition of my memoir, Dancing the Dialectic, True Tales of a Transgender Trailblazer, second edition published by Transgender Publishing in 2020. Can you tell us about some of the topics um, that contributing poets uh, wrote about in the anthology? Yes, Evan, the topics were diverse, ranging from the personal to the political, from the psychosexual to the sociocultural, from gender to sex and from sex to spirituality. Some of the religious poetry focused on Christian themes, but a number of the trans women penned poems about Greek and Egyptian goddesses, as this was the time of women's lib and feminism. And of course, many poems focused on gender identity as experienced by a transsexual woman or transsexual man or by a transgender or androgynous or non-binary person or by a or by a male crossdresser. Several poems touched on romantic or sexual themes as envisioned by gay or bisexual trans men or by lesbian or bisexual trans women, and a couple of sexually explicit poems by a male bisexual crossdresser, as this was also the time of gay lib and bi lib. Trans people, like cis people, both shaped and were shaped by the major sociocultural paradigm shifts happening from the late 1960s into the early 1990s, a quarter century of changing socio-sexual patterns. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so in this time, in the, the multiple, multiple different versions, um, I'm wondering how did you structure this 400 plus page book um, to make it even more informative and, and user-friendly for your readers? The overall book is divided into three main sections with two subsections for the first two sections. Book one, transsexualism, has part one, male to female transsexualism, and part two, female to male transsexualism. Book two, transgenderism or androgyny, has part one, male to female transgenderism, and part two, female to male transgenderism. And book three, it's transvestism or cross-dressing, uh, male to female. Unfortunately, no female cross-dressers had submitted the poetry. This division was made to reflect the specific various identities or subcategories of the overall transgender community, which comprised several subcommunities back then, but nowadays it's all lumped together as the, non, as the trans and non-binary community. And in addition to the introduction, the forward and the afterward, I inserted end notes as relevant, as well as a listing of many bios referencing certain certain contributing poets and cross-referencing their poems according to the major sections and subsections. Sadly, no photographs or images were included as I didn't have the technical means to do this, but there were hardly any images anyway. And as they say, a poem is a picture in words. Absolutely. Um, and final question for you. Um, do you have any words of wisdom for aspiring trans or non-binary poets um, as to how they can get their work out in the world, either in published or unpublished formats? Besides penning poetry in your own personal blogs or videos, you could try to find some local spoken word venues to read aloud your poems. Or if you want to see your poems in print, 
you could try submitting a book of poetry to Night Boat Books in Brooklyn, New York, or another small American trans or queer press. Unfortunately, I don't know of any in Canada who publish uh, queer trans poetry. Good luck, my, my artivist friends, and go gently. Thank you very much, Rupert, for this uh, for this interview, for this video, for your fantastic uh, fantastic new anthology um, and your work over the years. I, I've very much appreciated uh, talking with you today, and I'm certainly sure that uh, that future uh, poets and and artivists um, will also be uh, finding uh, finding inspiration um, in this in this video and in in your your writing. So thank you very much, Rupert. Thank you, Professor Taylor. Thank you, Evan.